let's break the mold. Start believing and stop waiting for the other shoe to drop. Welcome to Wild on 7, presented by Pilot Games. We're here until it's here. All right, welcome back. This is Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast, as always, presented by Pilot Games. A big weekend of hockey around Minnesota. You've got the state high school hockey tournament. The Wild, as always, have to go out on the road and clear space for that high school hockey tournament. Uh, a lot of buzz downtown St. Paul. And then the Wild go out to the west where at least if you if you stay up late and watch some of these high school games, you can catch the final period of the Wild games. But uh, what do you make of all things hockey this weekend? Let's start with the state high school tournament. It's the best. I love it. I love it so much. And it was a great tournament. You had such a different situation. In the single A, you had fire wagon hockey. They, it was last goal wins. Mm -hmm. um, Bobby Orr style, Matamidae. People flipping onto the ice. It was nuts. And then the double-A game, that might as well have been an NHL playoff game. That's what it looked like. Good sticks. Um, no one's making a mistake. Big bodies. It was like um, mature hockey, the double-A game. Which, like, I mean, <laughs> shut things down, tighten it up. No one making. I mean, it didn't even look like high school hockey. It's like, um, I mean, structure. Uh, everyone's in lanes, um, systems. But I, I like the contrast because you had kind of this chess match and then you had like connect four i mean the single a was a blast that goal if you're that kid and that overhead camera shot of him diving through with the stick i don't know I, you might chase that the rest of your life i don't know where you go from there you know what a play i thought it was great i love the tourney we yeah me too i loved it It was fun it was great the the scoring like warroad almost went clean sweep so and over one boys girls last year warroad almost did the same this year i can't believe i mean imagine that season oh gosh what a heartbreaker for warroad they hadn't lost a game all year and then you win in the state title game that one stings a little bit uh but congratulations to the guys from matamida um fun game and you're right that was an absolute barn burner how about the guy and and we don't condone this behavior, but how about the kid jumping over the glass, going right into the pile with the celebration? <laughs> the, the the moment you're on the ice, the moment you realize what you've done is when they all go to the handshake line and you're just sitting there like, uh, <laughs> not a part of this. security. <laughs> Wait, I'm not in the team photo. Yeah, you're. It's sort of like a um, hundred percent terrible idea and a hundred percent interesting idea yeah but uh, yeah we don't we don't condone that for sure but and he was over the glass by the way before it, the team it was fast so that goal goes in and I, I was watching it's crazy that goal goes in and everybody leaves the bench this is how cool and how much the kids love the student section they don't even run up the ice to celebrate with the kid that scored it's it's instantly to the two panes of glass of <laughs> student section and that's everybody on the bench like doesn't matter who scored this one we won let's go celebrate in the student section i thought that was hilarious no, it's it's so it's such a great tradition. It's it's a natural resource. It's a jewel. I What's, mean, we have to protect the state tournament. It's wonderful. And then the the double A game. I can't believe the finish. Double post. My, I was watching it with my wife, and my wife was convinced that that puck curved over the goal line. Hit both posts curved curved over the goal line, and then came back out. She's like, I think that was in. Uh, man, what a finish for that one! Uh, exciting game for sure. But um, congrats to Tonka Matamidi for the win. I was able to take some of the games in and go to the expo. Um, as a fan, and it was pretty cool. What's the best way to take in the state tournament? You know, Thursday, Friday, I think you got to go down 7th Street, you got to bar hop a little bit, have a beer here and there, jump in, check out a game or two. Like, like what's your preferred method? Well, I think that Thursday day is pretty great. I didn't mm -hmm. get to, I was doing the hockey hair stuff. I was locked in my basement doing a, sewing a sweater vest of uh, hockey hair, unfortunately. But um, I think that Thursday day has got to be the best. And then if you can do both sessions, like do old school, like take off work, I'm down there, Eagle Street, you know, McGovern's bouncing around. The only trick though is once you're into the rink, you're in. I, I've heard there's some like, hack where you can go out the smoking door or something and like run to <laughs> right. 7th Street right. and run back. I've heard that for like 10 years. I don't even know if that's true. But um, I think the problem is if you've had a few drinks and you load into the game, that little hour between 
sessions is is pretty tough because you kind of are like, should we just go home and watch it on TV? You get caught kind of in between. Um, I had a question for you, though. Uh, a mom asked me this, and it was really interesting. She said, why do they schedule the games at 6 and 8? Because the 8 o'clock game never, ever happens at 8 o'clock, ever. Even if the 6 o'clock game runs on time, the 8 o'clock game starts at 8.50, but it's on the calendar at 8. It's it's weird. I mean, and I, it's not because of the morning session because they have the big gap. It's I think it's impossible for the game to start at 8. Well, so it and it, that's a late start and a hard turnaround, I think, for the kids too. So if, yeah. I'm, if I'm Andover, I say, man, that's tough. I had to wait for the OT game before. I start a late game on Thursday night. We win that one. And they didn't play, like they played with three lines, but they're really a, a top heavy team. So then they have to quick rebound and come back the next night. Like tough for a kid to, to like have to wait around for an 8.30, 8.50 start and then play well, then regroup back to back three games in three days. Like it, some of these kids are going to run out of gas, but you're right. That, that second game never starts on time. It, uh, it's, I don't think it could. I, I don't know how it would, right? You'd have to have the first game be played in like an hour and a half. I, I also love the Thursday games because I think it's a coin flip on if people are going to make it into the games. Or that's, not. that's absolutely you know, right. It's, it's, they're, they're, it's, let's all meet up downtown St. Paul somewhere and you have like your tradition, your spots, the things you do. And then you get into a little bit and the game starts and then it's like flip a coin. All right, 50 50. Are we going in? Are we staying out for the first game? Let's catch the second game. It's a slippery know. slope. Yeah. <laughs> and I, it might be better not to go in. Yeah. It might be better just to come down to seventh, sit at a bar. It's on every TV. I don't know, man. It's a great tradition. It's, it's just packed. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely love it. Let's get to the wild hockey. So they go out west. They, they clear room for the greatness that is the state high school hockey tournament. And they go to San Jose. First game without superstar KK97. And like everybody predicted, they broke their goal scoring drought. And they put five, <laughs> they put five up on them. Um, what, like, what do you make of that? Do you, I mean, did you watch a game? I think it's interesting. Um, it's almost like with him out... You know, it's like you were right-handed, and now you got to learn how to be left-handed. Or they're they're doing like a B-side on the record. Um, I had a buddy say, "I think this is going to be good for them." Yeah, because Kirill's an ox. You know, when he gets back, you know, knock on wood, when he gets back, whenever that happens, that he's going to be Kirill. And if all these other guys can rise up while he's out. Um, then we're going to put those two things back together, and it's going to be even stronger. It's going than to be it greatness. Was. I, 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 it's I don't know. It's funny it's that because that's the sentiment that that I w was expressed to me numerous times. Yeah. while and in, it was right away. Yeah, it was. Like, this is a no, good thing yeah, for them. Everybody, like really, <laughs> this is going to be great. It's going to be great because everybody else has to like find their game. They're going to have to like, figure out how to score. Where did you come? People from? are going to have to step up, and then when Creel comes back, everything's going to be good, and it's going to be great. I heard that numerous times more than I can count on one hand for sure everybody's real optimistic about it and as so far I think that they've been right you know the guys that you needed to have step up and one of them is uh, our guest for the podcast yeah, this week. I, absolute podcast bump for him and well we'll we'll see if he acknowledges that he needs to we'll have to what did he he's got a goal and assist the first game he scored yeah, yesterday the first goal of the game I mean, <laughs> he said he hadn't scored in a long time we'll get to the interview uh in a couple of minutes but matt zuccarello uh was joking during the interview that he hadn't scored in a long time uh and boom here he is He's got goals in back-to-back -back games. But he's one of the guys that was going to have to step up. I think everybody knew that. And not that he had to step up and and do more, but he probably had to start finishing a little bit, where if he doesn't have Kaprizov, he's got to continue to make other people better. And is that Sam Steele, you know, Ryan Hartman? What does that look like? But he still had to be a driver for offense. And he's he's totally shouldered that load. He, I, I mean, he looks great in these games. And then the other one was obviously Matt Boldy. And this one was the one that was intriguing to me because you have a guy that I think at times can have a tendency to defer a little bit and kind of lay in the weeds. And by force, it's, hey, we, you know, we don't have a choice anymore. We need to score and you need to be the guy. And I think it was through, I don't know, 28 minutes in the San Jose game, he had seven shot attempts. So he's not passing anything up. Like he understood, this is my moment. He ends up scoring goals in back-to-back -back games too. So the, the couple of guys up front that you needed to step up and provide offense 
all of a sudden did. Now, I think what you can analyze from it was, was it at a cost? You know, the Wild gave up five in Arizona, a couple in San Jose. So now defensively, they're a little bit more leaky. And is that because they're chasing offense? They're trying to do these things. They're cheating on, you know, maybe one step in front of wild side as Dean Evison likes to talk about wild side is probably putting a body between the opposition and your goaltender. That's the wild side, you know, and are you, are you drawn even with them and you're losing a step here and there. I think that that does happen a little bit. And um, I, I think in terms of the, the philosophy and the style that they want to play looks a little different to Jared Spurgeon up in the play much more. It's like he's recognized, okay, if we're going to score and get some points, accumulate points down the stretch without Kaprizov, the D have to get involved. So you've got Klingberg, you've got Jared Spurgeon, the D jumping up in the play more. They're giving up a little bit more the other direction, but they're finding ways to outscore the opposition. So I, I, I think it's a good thing so far. Yeah, I, and you know, Billy said he wants to be able to play a lot of different ways. And when you get to playoffs, um, to have the ability to be the two to one, it's almost like the single A and the double A, right? I mean, we we've been playing like the double A for a month, you know, winning these low scoring games, yeah, right. and then this weekend it was like Matamida War Road. I mean, we're all over the place against Arizona. Did you see anything that you thought was troubling, or did you think it's fine? You get a point in Arizona, you go to overtime, whatever. It got away, Clayton Keller. But did you think? Do you like their game, or do you think they need to tighten it back up? I don't know if they need to tighten it back up right now, but I think there's a there's a lot of stock, I think, being put into losing a couple games to Arizona that I don't think should be put there. For whatever reason, that team seems to be good at, at Mullet Arena, and they've, they even went to Denver, and I think they beat... Uh, Colorado or took Colorado to OT. So they're, they're competitive. They work hard. But I, you have to give that club credit because they lost a bunch of pieces. Chikrin, Bugstad, like they traded Richie. They, anybody that was of value, they threw out the door. And then they brought other people in. Those people are fighting and playing for jobs, quite literally in Arizona, fighting for jobs. That's why the Wild 7-3 Savages had to come out uh, yesterday a little bit. But I, I don't see anything that's alarming. I think that they're fine. Um, Arizona's a little bit better than I think people give them credit for. Um, they can catch you by surprise with how hard they work. They were opportunistic. Gus wasn't his best. I think that's probably the takeaway is all of a sudden he looked a little bit human for the first time since it seems thanksgiving like legitimately it's been that long for him uh, but nothing to be concerned about uh what do you think about the seven street savages i love i like when we play violent i think uh i think it's i'd actually like to see more of it you know when it's it's a debatable play when that stanley um you know sits on Kirill and seemed like he was trying to reverse hit him and it was just kind of an unfortunate situation but I like that I like when our team stands up for each other and we have the heavies right if you have Reeves you know you should you should set the bomb off every once in a while I think just to keep people guessing too I do you like that style I think I mean you've always said it since the start of the year we're going to lead the league in penalty minutes and I think we play better when we're angry I, I do too. I do too. And the question I would get, I, I have for you is, did it look like they legitimately wanted to fight and did it look like they were legitimately imposing their will? Uh, you think, why you think they didn't want to? I, I don't know. I, what, did it did it look like it was obligatory, like they, they had to fight these fights? Or do you think it was, we're imposing our will? I think it was, we're digging our heels in the ground a little bit. These young guys from Arizona, they feel like they've got something to prove. Um, we're just going to show them quick that they've still got some time to grow up. It, it, it wasn't like, hey, we're here and we're going to pound your head in. Yeah, more, more ticking the box, I suppose, right? Somebody wants to go you you have to oblige but i just think ever all year when we're at our best is you know when you see three guys in the penalty box and felino's yeah. shoulder pads are off right that usually means something something good is how happening. about the one injury felino did you see the replay uh felino fell on somebody's skate and it looked like maybe he was going to take one to the lower unit and oh, no. he's running up the ice. Looked like it, and it looked like he was hurt and looked like he had cut. Did his, he hit it? Did he take pants. one there? Yeah, I think he did. Like a skate blade, and he was like concerned. <laughs> it was, it was, I've never heard of that happening. That would not be good. No, I, uh, he looked concerned, but he was on the bench. Everything was okay. So, and there's another possible silver lining. You know, with Kirill out, um, 
I think this is probably my best chance to become friends with him. Kirill. How? Well, he's just, he's, he's not on the road. He's, he's got to be around the building. Like we could watch Netflix with subtitles. I don't know if like you can do Russian and we can just sit. Like, I, I think we're probably going to become friends in this next month. Well, if, I mean, he's in the building probably now. Well, maybe. So, like I said, we're well, going to might be. We'll the, tease the interview. We'll tease the, the interview Bahamas. if he's listening to his good buddy. He's, <laughs> he's already on a plane. He's ten toes up with some vitamin D on his uh, forehead right now. Yeah. He might but. be wearing a straw hat somewhere. I hope so. I think Carell will get sunburned, don't you? I do, but some something tells me that no, he's he's got that figured out. But uh, let's let's. I want to grade the new guys quick. So you've got Klingberg, Sonny. Johansson. We haven't seen Nyquist yet, but uh, let's let's start with Klingberg. W- what do you think? Do you, and we'll get to the power play with it. But have you liked his game? I do like his game. Uh, he's an interesting player, though, because I feel like we have a lot of guys um, like him. You know, we've got that offensive. It seems like there's about four different guys that could run our power play. So I think the people that really appreciate him are guys like you, where you can see the little nuance to. No, actually, he's different. You know, look yeah. at what he's doing. He's this is a little different. You know, this is a this is a top shelf um, you know drink we're having. But uh, I like him. Um, I think you know we've got. It's nice now with Kirill out that we have some of these upgrades offensively that we can dial it up. Like you said, Spurge can get down low. Klingberg can get points. But I've liked his game. How about you? Yeah. So he's he's collecting points and doing. I think what they want him to there, and I'll touch on the power play in a minute. I think it's still just going to take some time for the Wild to coach and exercise some of the turnovers out of his game a little bit. So he's loose with the puck, but that's what you like about his game. So you have to be careful not to just dummy it down for him. And I think he's at a spot in his career where he he actually, quite frankly, doesn't care about that. And I think if you look at the trade philosophy, what the Wild were looking at, and 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 Everson's not. He looked at the numbers with Addison and said he's minus 18 and that jumps off the page at you and you're going to be healthy scratched for it and it's something that needs to be addressed and fixed. And you look at Klingberg and the numbers are much worse. And you say, well, if you're going to be consistent, you have to, you know, you'd know, you have to say something similar to Klingberg. Obviously, he's got a little bit more leash because he's new and, and he does things differently. But uh, I think that the matchups that they started to put him in in Anaheim, he was like a top pair D man. So he's playing against the top, you know, in a shutdown role, hopefully trying to score a little bit. And he's, he's not going to have success there. So now at least at home, they're able to protect him a little bit, not protect him, but not have to have him eat like the heavy minutes against the other team's top players. So as long as he's turning these pucks over, is it, it's going to be to third and fourth line guys. And it's, you know, it's not going to bite you terribly bad. Like the, you know, they're, they're just not the finishers that the top line guys are that he's used to playing against. But if you can continue to slowly condition some of these turnovers out of them and say, hey, we don't have to make that play here. Well, you know, it's a it's a simple play. And I think slowly he'll he'll start to manage the puck a little bit better. And all of a sudden he'll be good um, to where that you're not defensively concerned whatsoever with him out there. But the power play. It's interesting for me without Kaprizov here because now it's almost instantly that power play becomes Klingberg's power play. Where I was interested when Klingberg came here that it's it's Kaprizov, it's the flanks, it's the movement up front, and really Kalen Addison was a complementary piece to those guys and knew who to get the puck to, when and where, and the power play was very successful for that. Now, all of a sudden, without Kaprizov, it's Klingberg walking the line, making plays one-on-ones, looking for holes, shooting pucks, and he's able to quarterback the whole thing. And I think quarterback's a good term because you go from what would be a game manager, a Kirk Cousins, to all of a sudden you have somebody like Lamar Jackson or... Patrick Mahomes and um, you know, and that's not apples for apples and, but it's just like a game management to a difference maker. And I think he started to make a difference and we'll see how that transpires over time. If that power play can keep clicking um, cause it's starting to look a little bit better under him as the QB. So uh, I think the pickup is good. Um, the offense, the plays, the vision it's there. It's just a matter of probably cleaning up some of the turnovers cause some of them have just, you know, not been great. Um, next guy, let, let's take a look at Sunquist because I think he's been really good. What What have your thoughts been? 
He's he's a little bit more of a mystery to me. I don't know what he is yet. I'm kind of some of these guys come in and you can kind of tell right away. Even Johansson, like he's just so fast, and I like watching him with Boldy. Um, I don't I don't know. Ex- he he reminds me. He's with with Greenway moving right. You kind of think, well, this is a big body. He's got the he's a big guy, right? Um, but he's almost one of these. He's almost like a big guy that. Uh, doesn't want to be a big guy, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you look at the he way he wants to be a skill guy, yeah, he the yeah. way he plays, it's like he's he's a skill guy stuck in this big body, and so I think the eye test is weird with him because what I want to see right away is him just running around. But um, I don't know what I think of him yet. I I know I like Johansson already, uh, Klingberg. Um, I'm anxious to see how different he makes us because we already had a good power play. So I'm just trying to figure out what that does. But what have you liked about? Sunquist? Well, a couple of things. One, the the addition of Sunquist seems to have gotten Marcus Felino going again. Like Marcus yeah. is physical. Yeah, he looks a little bit faster. He's finishing hits. He's scoring goals. So for whatever or however that happened, Sunquist has seemed to find a way to get him going. And he did make one unbelievable backhand sauce pass through the middle to Marcus that Marcus ended up scoring. So that was a beautiful play. Uh, but I, I like Sunquist because so far he's been exactly what the Wild have needed him to be, which is a big body that wins battles on the walls. And he does seem to win a lot of those. And yep. he's good with puck possession. And he can get it off, get it up to the D, offensive zone time, pressure. But then at the same time, he does have that little skill guy mentality where he wants to be that. And he's not afraid to make a backhand sauce pass through the middle. It hasn't burnt the Wild yet. It hasn't burnt him yet. So I think he's been quietly just a terrific pickup for him. And he's fit in seamlessly. And whether it's the Swedish house mafia that's <laughs> gotten him into, into the fold and said this, is how we do it or what but i think he's been great um i really do and, and and that's been a good fit billy has a real history of grabbing guys and i don't know if it's a dean thing or a, a system thing but man when we put new players into our team they really seem to rise up well and yeah i think you're right and now that's a perfect segue into johansson yep because now he has risen to the occasion and now it's going to be a matter of consistency so you set the bar pretty high he came out he was noticeable he was skating he made boldy better uh, they played with more pace they were able to score produce now can he consistently do it that's going to be the issue and i think you always get what you what you can consider like a trade bump where guys get to a new spot, there's a hyper focus on the game. Guys play really well for a bit. They're they're almost where if you go down to the locker room, it says it's earned, not given. After a trade, it's almost always given. You're given opportunity. You're proving what you can do. Guys understand that, so you you often get the best out of them. And then it's five, ten games down the road that you have to really look at this, these guys and assess them. So Johansson's been great right off the bat, and the question will be. F- for him, with me, is will the skating continue to be that good? Will he continue to to work that hard and push the pace and do all these things? If the answer is yes, that's an absolute steal. And you think of like playoff games, right? And it's you look at Tampa over the years, it's always these depth guys that win big games for you in the playoffs. And we really didn't have that at the start of the year. But now with these acquisitions, you know, these are going to be some of the names you can imagine hearing on the score sheet in the playoffs to win a big game. It's like Richard Park, you know, winning a, a big game for the Wild back in the day. I think that we have all these guys can can put pucks into the net. And I think that that depth scoring is everything. Even Revo's, you know, score. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know what? I mean, you know what woke up yesterday? Must have had a good night's sleep was the fourth line. What do you think helped them maybe get some good sleep? Well, if I was trying to uh, put your sleep apnea to bed. Ryan, I would go to uh, mygemsleep.com forward slash wild because there's about 30 million people that are walking around like zombies. Uh, They haven't got a good night's sleep. It's affecting their relationships. It's affecting their energy. And only about five of them are diagnosed, five million, right? So there's a lot of people that don't know. And the reason they typically don't do it is it's like, it's going to be a lot of work. Mm, It's hard. But with my gem sleep, they come to the house. They they do everything for you. They're like the Uber concierge. Eats. They're yeah. Uber Eats. They they take it. They take care of it. It worked for your mom. So I would encourage you if you aren't sleeping well, or if your partner isn't sleeping well, check out mygemsleep.com forward slash wild. Put your sleep apnea to bed. That is quite a tagline. And but I know that you're also into constructing things yourself. 
Yeah. And if I was going to construct a good night's sleep, I'd start with gem sleep. If I was going to construct a house and, and need a new roof, I would call my friends at Wild Construction. So whether you need roofing, windows, siding, insulation, any of that stuff, they can take care of you all winter long. I know it has been a long winter with lots of snow. And uh, I, quite frankly, I wish it would stop snowing and it hasn't. And if you're one of those people that's nervous because you have ice dams out there and as that snow continues to accumulate on top of the, the ice, if you're concerned that there's going to be damage or that your insulation isn't right and you want that looked at, you got to check out our guys at wildconstructionmn.com. It's a locally owned business. They're client focused to ensure satisfaction. They pride themselves in working with clients to make sure they're Projects are finished timely and to their satisfaction. Hey, you've got to make sure you check these guys out. Wildconstructionmn.com. They will make it happen. Nice job, buddy. Nice Thank job. You. You're back. Um, so let's talk about a few other things. So yeah. how about Spurgeon plus 31? I mean, w- what a season. You know, the next best guy is Middleton plus 14, who's been riding with him for about half the year. But what is what is Spurge doing that he's just a you look at that stat sheet, right? And I mean Eric's an X a minus, right? And you've got a plus thirty one for Spurge. What what's that about? Well, and the what I think what makes it more amazing is that the to the same point I was making with Klingberg is that Jared Spurgeon gets the toughest of matchups. Yeah. So you're you've got your other trusted shutdown defenseman and Jonas Brodeen out of the lineup. So that puts even more pressure on a guy like Jared Spurgeon to where it's, hey, we need you to be in all of these spots. And it's not like it's just five on five that the defensive dominance has been there. Like he's unbelievable at the kill. He's in that spot that has to eat the Ovechkin one timer to give you a visualization. And of he where does. He's, yeah, he does. He just goes down and I don't know, man, it takes a lot of courage to do that. But he's one of those guys. And I was watching, I ISO cammed him in the games a couple times last night. And his his footwork is really good, but he's also smart and understands and reads the play out in front of him. So as as lines get going in, in their offensive zone and they're like Spurgeon and Middleton are in their defensive zone, he knows where the play is going kind of before the play goes there. And he's able to like shut it down with his feet. He gets in there and then he's a quick little one pass guy that up the ice. So I think the plus, you know, the the plus number is twofold. He's great defensively, but then he doesn't hold on to the puck too long, doesn't make mistakes. It's also nice when he can throw it right up to Caprice off and and he skates down the ice, makes a nice dish or a play and scores a goal. But um Spurgeon and, and Middleton, it, it it's it, and the stat out there somewhere around 10 or 12, 13 games, I think, where they hadn't given up a goal against five on five. And, you know, the Wild had given up, I think, in that that span, maybe like 20 total goals. Um, in general, so it's not like they anybody's given up a lot, but pretty amazing for a top pair D to not give up anything five on five for the better part of three or four weeks. And I don't think Middleton knows how good he is, right? He's he's got that amazing personality. You know, we had him on the podcast. I could sit with him all day. He's just hilarious. But he's really a. I mean, he's in a top pair. Um, I think he's only going to get better down the stretch. I think fans are going to love this guy in the playoffs. And if you look offensively, you really do see him more now. You see him jumping into the play. He's getting on the score sheet. Um, I mean, that's a really interesting pair. I don't know how they thought about putting those two together, but it's it's really worked. And Well, I think the... the thought behind it was you have Spurgeon, who's a great defender, and mobility's there, but if he gets out there against a big line and I think that it was it's bounced around in Colorado. It's not that he even gets bounced around. It's that it's just harder for him to because you'll see him almost cover two guys net front at times. He'll have his guy stick tied up, but he'll he'll have the body positioning and the ability to get his stick free to break up a loose play or a rebound. Against the bigger guys like Colorado had, and I think it is Colorado the team that they were looking at, not necessarily, but if you have a Landeskog, a Rantanen, McKinnon, Natushkin, uh, those big bodies out front, it's hard for Jared to battle in a seven-game series against that. So what do you do? You give him somebody like Jake Middleton who's out there to just be abrasive, to be mean, to make it challenging, to have people think twice about going net front. And you put those two things together, clearly they've had a lot of success. No, they've been great. I think Hartman's been good too. Um I like seeing these guys kind of rise to the occasion, filling the filling the void uh, when Kirill's out. I I wonder, you know, 
they're saying three to four weeks. So does that mean he's going to maybe come back with a week left in the season or something like that? Is that what that tracks out to be? Yeah. Or there's maybe 10 days or something. Yeah. I think there's about a month left in the regular season so that they'd give him a week um, and change. You know, the hope is probably that 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 it's at the three weeks versus the four weeks, and that gives them a little bit more time. Certainly don't think that they'll rush him at all, but uh, Hartman had a – I thought Hartman had a little scare the other night. It, somebody stepped up, hit him, hit him in the shoulder, looked like maybe he – you know, the Anthony LePant on the broadcast was saying maybe he thought that he lost his wind or something. Like I thought, a rib? I almost. thought maybe it was it was almost that so that shoulder that he injured earlier, maybe got hit in a way that it, it – it stung it back, but uh, he came back out and played, which was a good thing. But um, if you start, we got to make sure the Wild have to make sure that they continue to stay healthy down the stretch. So now you can't have the injury start to compound and pile up. It looks like they're getting healthy though, because Nyquist is skating, Duhame is skating. Uh, you've got Brodeen. What's the yeah, status? Brodeen's there? on the road trip. He's skating oh, as well. So it uh, looks like the reinforcements are coming. Um, so this is that's good. They say this is the one of the best trips of the year, right? The guys have a couple extra days in Arizona, getting some sun, and then they got the TNT game on on Wednesday, and then the big Bruins tilt. I think this Saturday is going to be pretty interesting. You're kind of in that St. Patrick's Day zone the day after, um, and uh, Boston coming to town. This team we've all been hearing about this wagon out east so i think that one's going to be circled on people's calendars uh, what style are we going to play against boston is it going to be one of these lockdown games is it going to be a fire you know fire wagon hockey is reeves going to be beating someone up i'm very interested what do you think that'll be like with boston yeah boston's not playing great hockey right now they're they're still finding ways to win but they had a back-to-back -back with detroit over the weekend and they fell behind by multiple goals in each game it seems like they're running out of gas a little bit um but I, they're still the measuring stick and they're i think they're still and that's part of it with boston when you're that good you know that it's polarizing and you're going to get the best from everybody else you play in so i think saturday what we'll find out is how good the wild can really be without kaprizov absolutely you're going to get everybody's best absolutely and and also what style do we play against these guys boston's one of those teams we only see them twice a year but i would say i think i'm not in the minority that we kind of don't like them. Um, they had the incident with Kaprizov and Frederick. Um, I mean, they're just, they're kind of like bullies, right? And when they come into town, there's something with the wild where they really, in in a very short order, <laughs> they can become unlikable, you know, where you're you're really upset at the Bruins. These guys you only see twice a year, but I'm interested to see what style of you, game that is. Do you think the Bruins request to be on the road March 18th? They should. <laughs> because, like, can we please be on the road in an afternoon game on March 18th so that none it's of our guys made get, for, it's made for none trouble. of our guys get, uh, you know, the, the, the itch to go out and in Boston or take some yeah. of the, the Irish festivities on March 17th. Well, there's in just, Boston and, and the wild must always request a home game right in that zone. It's just a, it's St. Patrick's Day, St. Paul. An afternoon tilt. I mean, that is just a, a slippery slope all around. <laughs> um, I think it'll be a fun day for a lot of people. Speaking of fun, it uh, Matt Zuccarello, we don't get a lot of them. Are you uh, referring uh, to Mats Andre Asen Zuccarello? Exactly. Yes. So good. Yeah, I know. If you didn't know, he's got four names. We'll touch on it in the podcast. But so um, he, we don't get a lot of them. So it's kind of fun. It was fun to sit down with him for a bit uh, and, and learn a little bit about him. But um, let's toss it to the interview now. Matt Zuccarello, he's, uh, he's hot. He's got the podcast bump, two goals last two games. And uh, here he is now. This interview is sponsored by Duke Cannon. If your hair is a weapon or you wish it was, check out Serious Flow Lightweight Main Tamer. This is as good as it gets for hockey hair or any type of hair. Check out check out Duke Cannon at Target or DukeCannon.com. All right. Well, we've had to wait a couple of years for this one. We've been wanting the guest on the podcast, and um, he's hard to, to get to hang around with us a little bit. But we have the international man of mystery from Norway. And correct me if I'm saying this wrong, please. It's Matt's Andre Zuccarello. Asen? Yeah. That's the whole name. Uh, well, Matt's Andre uh, Asen Zuccarello now. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's we used great. to be Asen, yeah. 
You should call him that every when you do games. You should do the full name. Have some respect. <laughs> I used to have. I think you maybe in the Olympics. I had Sukaro Asen on the on your jersey. Yeah. So it had to like loop around. Yeah, yeah. just so, all the way around. So from like it, one tricep it, yeah. all the way down. To the <laughs> met all the way down at the it's lower a wordle. back. Yeah, just a full <laughs> circle. Uh, that's awesome. Well, thanks for hanging with us for a couple minutes. We'll get out. Of, we'll let you get. You've got a plane to catch today. Yeah. Thanks for finally having me. You know. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. gonna buy a Nor- Norwegian sweater, but I just got the T-shirt. I didn't get advance notice you were coming. Uh-huh. I was going to go all out. Oh like yeah. A Three hundred dollar. Yeah. The real. Oh, we ones. wanted to come on this for. Um, for years now so i, I bet I, I heard you <laughs> you've been anxious yeah it's i like, heard you knocking on the door actually <laughs> sorry about that uh, hey what do you make of the swedish mafia i mean they say you're half swedish you know being norwegian they got seven seven of them walking around how's the infusion been well i, I like it really good guys uh obviously i speak swedish as well and uh play with most uh, some of the guys before they got here and know them so uh i think it's good how many languages do you speak? Dep- depends if I'm uh, sober or drunk. Uh, <laughs> a drunk. How, how many, many languages drunk? can you swear oh. in? Drunk. <laughs> drunk. It's about like seven or eight. I know. A what bit of Spanish, you're... Italian, Russian. Yeah, I was there, gonna say, you know? how's the Russian? How is the Russian? No, I, I don't speak. He's uh, okay. Russian. He's I, gonna be okay. I speak <laughs> three or four uh, weeks. English, Russian, kind of Swedish. Is, in in the mix, so Kirill understands. That's that's my specialty. <laughs> is his English is where is it really at? Is he just? I just picture him the second Sack. the door is closed from the media. He just he just flew in English, or is he? Where is he really? I at? I, I wish I could uh, tell you, but yeah. it's, uh, conf- it's you're not going to throw him under the no. bus. <laughs> no. But w- okay, hopefully you will throw him under this bus. This, uh, so he's uh, like, does he FaceTime you and the family often? Uh, we FaceTime often. Yeah. Does he sing any nursery rhymes or? Mm, I don't want to break anyone's hearts, <laughs> but uh, no, How not. Yeah. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He, but he's. Uh, we 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 call pretty much every day or every other day. Uh, usually we see each other, but there's also maybe a call in and there. Uh, he's usually asking a question or or. You're like the just big want brother. To see my face, you know. <laughs> just doesn't get, doesn't get enough of you. No. So uh, let, let's stay on Kirill, you and Kirill. Why do you, why do you sit at the end of the bench? You don't like to Me? slide down to the middle? Yeah, or the two of you? Uh, like normal cadence is you go on the bench, you slide to the middle, you jump over the boards, you go play. But you, you like to be at the end of the bench, right? Yeah, I just always kind of uh, like to kind of be in your own world over there. You know, it's a lot of action happening in the middle of the bench. Uh, our coach's voice is pretty loud too, you know. Uh, so, oh, so this uh, is like a new thing. This isn't something that you've always done? Uh, yeah, I've, I've done it for... A lot of years, yeah. Well, most of my years here. So I don't know what it is. It's just I like it over there. But it's a bad spot because the door. But you have the good spot. I feel like because Kirill's <laughs> always like on the inside, so yeah. his knee's always the one getting hit by the door. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. Uh, I don't know why he likes it there. I like it there, and we find uh, find find our own little home at the end there. I was telling the guys the story so, because you sit in that spot. And you don't like to talk to the the media or do certain things or go out your way. And I was between the benches, and part of the gig between the benches is I have to ask in the second period or maybe the first period they switch this one up on me on purpose to have to lean over the bench in a TV timeout and ask somebody like a quick question. And the TV guys set me up, and they're like, hey, yes, first period, we're going to have to get a forward, knowing that you'd be sitting next to the bench and knowing that you'd likely say no. So I have to lean over the bench. I'm like, hey, Matt's going to ask you a question. And you're like, yeah, sure. And then and you're like, oh, wait, for TV, like with a microphone, you're like, no, 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 I'm good now. And they, they all zoomed in. Uh, they were dying laughing, busting my chops. But um, no, oh, I, I like you guys. It's just uh, I'm shy, you know. I, I like to be uh, – there's other uh, other people that are more interested in me, you know, and uh, just well, like to sit in the back, you know. Well, you're having a heck of a year, man. I mean, an awesome season. Did you do anything differently? What do you think – um, what was special about this year? Because you're really, you're really rolling. Uh, no, I, I, I think uh, a lot, maybe not my first year here, where I had felt like maybe 
you, you coming into I was one of the oldest when I left New York and you come here and you have an oldest uh, like an older team you come in and take some time to find your place you know and I thought it was gonna get smoother than it did and you know there's a bunch of good players here from before and and they don't know you so my first year was a little tough hockey wise but uh, really great guys and then you get comfortable and obviously you find the or you find diamond in the rough and Kirill, you know <laughs> uh coming in and, and helping me and and we click right away on and off the ice and i think obviously he's making me a better hockey player and hopefully i can make sometimes him a couple of percent better so, hockey player so so what's your strategy to help him through this period where he's not going to be able to play hockey because i picture this guy this is going to be stressful for him to not be i mean you're going to have like a lot of different things planned yeah you know? i i think uh, he's young too you know and he's he, he can get emotional so i think he's never been through stuff like this before you know uh, an injury or a setback so what I would say to him is just enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Take some time. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Take some time and Ask for rehab in and, Southern uh, Florida. Go hang out, get a yeah. tan, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. See a specialist <laughs> down in Bahamas, I heard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be so That's great. The best he's just he comes back, he's twenty five pounds heavier, he's tan, yeah. got braids. Um, hey, I, I wanna when you guys played New York recently. Uh, Hank was there with Ryan Reynolds and Alexander Skarsgård, and all I could think of is Zuki for sure is going down the tunnel, jumping into a town car, and going to this mysterious New York party. <laughs> Did that happen? Were you with a, in a white tuxedo at any point after that game with those guys? No, uh, that's. Uh, I mean, I'm good friends with Hank and uh, been for many years, but uh, in that sense, we are a little bit different. Uh, he. He's a stylish, good hair celebrity, and I'm just uh, in my sweatpants at home watching TV. Relaxing. So you're you're a homebody. You're private. You're. I, I like it. I mean, obviously, I think um, with my teammates, my closest friends, I'm outgoing and and sometimes fun. I would hope, uh, but uh, I think when there's a larger crowd and stuff like that, you you get you just want to be in the background and you're not as comfortable in, in those uh, situations. Uh, usually seven or eight uh, vodkas can uh, change that real quick, you know. <laughs> I would think. <laughs> so you, you're a, uh, I've heard that you're like a group chat all-star, you know, you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I used to be at least uh, until people banned me because there's uh, some videos they didn't like. But uh, yeah, no, uh, uh, I, I like that, you know. I like close family, yeah. and fun, and you you share everything with everyone. And any anybody else on the squad good on the group chat, or is it all just? I think once one, one gets going, it's a lot of other like hearts is good. There's always <laughs> people, you know. Some you have a lot of friends in different kind, like parts of the world, you know, that you played with and stuff. You're getting some crazy videos, yeah, in some and good humor, some really good ones, and then you share them, and then this guy got so. I think you, once you get on the roll, it's uh, a lot of guys uh, having good, good fun. Group chat is the best. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's almost like a locker room on your phone. For sure, yeah. it, group. I mean, that's the best, especially having a lot of different ones where yeah. it's all these different packs of people. Who who takes the most heat on the group chat? Oof. There's been some videos circling around of like Dewar being like Pipsqueak getting getting bumped. Yeah, up. I think I, I would say. Uh, he, <laughs> Revo took the last one. He he. <laughs> that doesn't seem like his brown suit. Uh, people didn't like that one, so he he took some heat. Uh, yeah, nothing's off limits. Style, no, like, you name it. Nothing's it's, off limits. It's it's fun though, you know. It's tight group we we have, and you can joke about anything, and and no one people get they get mad, but uh, you know no one gets sensitive. You know, this, we live in a sensitive world these days, so you can't say or mean no. or do anything these days so it's nice to have a tight group that you can uh, be yourself in yeah so lizard is that still a thing i don't know uh paul fenton gave me that gave uh, me that and <laughs> is it stuck i never met him so <laughs> that was a he, he was gone before i got here so he <laughs> signed me ticket. and uh, See you later. 
<laughs> and unfortunately, I, I didn't get to meet him, you know. But uh, send him like, like a lizard skin him. suit. If you're watching, um, thank you, Paul. You know, <laughs> uh, bringing me here to Minnesota. I really like it, love it, and thanks a lot. <laughs> That's so great. Um, hey, so you've, uh, a lot. Of, we've talked to a few goalies this year, and and consistently, you come up as the a deceptive shot. They can't figure out the the long stick, the way you release. What what's the story of the uh, the long stick and and kind of a little different style of shooting. I don't even know where you're going myself. Uh, other than now, it, it doesn't. It, it don't hit the net at least uh, back of the net. <laughs> I haven't scored in uh, how many games? But you, you uh, will know. Yeah, now now, now, now that you've been here, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's all smooth sailing for you. Yeah. No. Uh, no. I don't. I don't know. The long stick um, started when I was a kid. You know. You wanted to get a whippier stick, stick uh, for the slap shots and all that stuff. And with my uh, height, it wasn't that hard to get a whippy stick when it's this short, you know. <laughs> so I have to make it a little bit longer. And then now I, I can't go back. I, I try to have shorter sticks, you know, feel feel the puck better and and stuff like that. But um, I can't. I feel like it gets longer and longer the older I get. Well, it makes it a little easier. You don't want to skate less and less. You get that long stick, a little you more just reach. Just have to poach it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at the same time, man, like, w- the stick has to help you. So when I'm thinking about it, the long stick is hard because you don't have leverage in like small areas, like yeah. in the corners, and guys can get underneath it kind of easy. But you win a lot of those battles. But I you also never see you get hit. You know, like it, I never see you get lined up. Nobody can get like a big piece of you. How like how, yeah? How Jeez, is that? Carts, yeah, wow, wow that that's part man. of it. It's like a style. Of, uh, it's just like a style of play. You can send him to the Bahamas here. <laughs> He's got a buddy there. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine the two of them? We never see oh, him well, skating up. And just like yeah. this. Yeah. He's gonna play with his head down for the first time in his career. Uh, funny. Um, and no, yeah. So that uh, I think uh, sometimes if you have a short stick, you're more bent down. I have a longer so you feel like you're up all the time i think that's a part of it too that i can't change i feel like if i go shorter i i don't see anything and if i can't pass then there's not much left <laughs> of the hockey player so i kind of well, have to uh, i kind of have to be a passer and uh yeah that sounds good there is still a little bit more because you're a shootout expert like breaking into the nhl i think you were an offensive guy but your role i think it was towards your first yeah, coach. For, uh, towards, yeah. so it's like a fourth line role to start yeah, but yeah. Shoot, shootout specialist yeah. and you've continued that give me the the anatomy of a good shootout move you know like what do you have one that you build everything off of or like what nah i don't know i missed my last two so i gotta score the next one to be an expert but um i just think they're so hard to score in a shootout. You know, the goalies these days are so good. They move. They, I think even when I got in, it was a little bit easier. You know, the goalies were, but now they're 6'5 and move like yeah, they're 5'5. They the the you you know, it's goalie. crazy. So uh, I think uh, you just have to try and read the goalie going in and, Close your eyes and hopefully the best. Well, but what are you looking for? Like you're looking for something. You come wide. Yeah, I think you keep if, it on your if, forehand. You're looking for something. I feel like I see if they're staying in, if they're coming wide out, uh, or top of the crease or wherever, and then I try to decide on the way there. And then uh, sometimes you get a good read and it goes in, and sometimes sometimes the goalie read you and you miss. So. Um, uh, but obviously, this it's something that you worked on growing up, you know, playing a lot with the goalies, boom, 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 and and so kind of sits a little, a little bit there. What makes Freddie Gaudreau so good at him? Well, he's first of all, he's probably have the best hands you ever seen, you know. Uh, um, so I don't know. Uh, I wish I knew. I would, but, I would have done the same. Yeah, right. Well, guys with good moves seem like the new thing is that it seems they like to come in wide, see if they can get a goalie moving laterally or something. But he does have like quick hands too. Yeah, he'll stick he's, out he's hard. smooth. But he can quick shoot hand. too. Yep. Um, so he's he's the perfect shooter guy. You know, uh, he has it has it all. He can shoot. He can deek. Smooth. He can go backhand, forehand, anything. So that's uh, that's. Uh, Repertoire, what do you say? Repertoire, repertoire, yeah, repertoire that everyone would like to have. Yep, I, I think we send them out with rapid fire. 
Well, Cinema, I've got, uh, I kind of want to ask a couple more. So just real quick before we let you go, do you have a few more minutes? What's the rapid fire? Is rapid fire like, is just kind of a bunch of questions we come at you with okay. maybe to finish. Yeah. I was trying to, I was trying to go easy on them. Yeah, no, that's fine. What are you on? Uh, so I've heard that at times you can be a forgetful dude. Is that right or no? So <laughs> I've read this. I've read a story like one of your first trips out west when you were with the Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> what did he? Forget? You left. What What didn't he forget? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, I think it was my second road trip, I think. And uh, obviously, you're young and coming into the league and playing on the road, and you went out for a couple of beers, you know, and uh, one thing led to another, and then boom, you forget your bag, your phone, and your wallet at the hotel room. <laughs> and, uh, so, what do they do? Did they you wake up in the, on the plane, and where am I right now? And then. It's kind of a embarrassing going to Kaser at the R or the New York Raiders White Services yeah. guy, yeah. And uh, everyone leaves the plane, and me and him, and I'm. Um, can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> you know? He's like, "Yeah, what's up? Uh, I forgot my phone." He's like, "Oh, where? and my wallet." He's like, "Oh." And my bag. <laughs> so it's like you left everything. Everything. I just got got flew with on. whatever I had on. and then That was it. the right order to tell them, though. Yes. <laughs> Phone, <laughs> wallet, bag. bag. Yeah. If you would have done it the other way, I think, yeah. I think that was very Started a little, oh, you lost your phone. Okay. Yeah. And then I had not heard that but story. But that was, uh, no, that was came, coming in with a bag. Yeah. Well, that ha that's happened to me a ton of times too. You forget your toothbrush or your iPad yeah. or something. It happens, man. That's funny. Um, should we hit him with? Yeah. Did you consider naming your daughter Kirill? Yeah, but uh, middle, middle name or something. Yeah, I did. K uh, Kirill Caprisova. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is easy. The only people who do this slow are the goalies for some reason. Okay. So. Couple questions from me, couple questions from Carr. Just answer quick. If you don't have an answer, or you don't want to screw around with it. Pass, mm -hmm. and don't do pass for everyone, which would be funny. But <laughs> nickname, Zook. Weirdest thing in your overnight bag. Uh, it goes into my tooth, and I got. <laughs> uh, yeah, the special tooth. flosser. Yes. Yep. Uh, your first real job. I was a lifeguard. Nice. Aside from. Zuki and the Lizard, what are your nicknames? Matt. What do you listen to in the car? Uh, my mom's voice or my brother's voice. Phone guy. FaceTime. It's your birthday. Where are you going to dinner? Ibiza. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> A clinger. Uh, what's your coffee order at Starbucks? I don't drink coffee. Ooh. So you have a, What's your pregame snack? I eat lunch and then that's it. You have a green light in any NHL city. Where would you want to be? Forget your Minnesota. Oh, I like that. Um, hockey jersey you had as a kid? Yeah, Peter Forsberg, Colorado. What's your favorite Instagram follow? Uh, some funny video. I don't really get into Instagram that much. Uh, do you have your own like Netflix, Hulu, Spotify accounts, or do you like share them with? Your mom and I share it with my wife and family. Yeah, he's a grown right. up. He's fully grown up. Well, I have one, but my whole family also have that same one. Oh, so you're you're the you're the top <laughs> you're the top of the yeah. pyramid. So I'm I'm the one that actually ends up not be able to see because there's, uh, <laughs> there's too many there's screens too many watching. Screens, it. So I'm the only one that okay. I guess not today. That sounds good. What's your go to drink at the bar? Ooh, vodka ginger ale, I think. Oh, I haven't heard that one. Perfect weekend. What are you doing? Uh, guys trip somewhere, playing soccer, doing something sport-wise, sport, sport -wise, and uh, just enjoying a uh, couple of beers and fishing and all that stuff. Do you have a hidden talent? Not really. They're all, soccer. All I can speak to yeah, this. Yeah, I've heard about Soccer's soccer. his hidden talent. Like you, he, 
You didn't miss a beat. We went out with the the Minnesota club here, and he fit right in. Like yeah. the guys were impressed. <laughs> I was too. What the? Yeah. How do you do in the the pregame with the two touch or the sewer ball? Are you are you the champ? I think I'm ranked number one. Yeah. I would say okay. That. Yeah. That's good. Uh, who plays you in the movie? Ooh, Johnny Depp in his prime. Ah, uh, young Johnny Depp. That's a good call, by the way. Yeah. You have anything else? Pirates of the Caribbean. Who do you text the most? What are, yeah, who do you text the most? Well, I think Oof. we know. I think uh, group chat, uh, it's got to be Krill or some group chat at home. What profession, aside from hockey, would you like to do? Uh, a cop. Nice. Any that you wouldn't like to do? Mm, a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> What's the last thing you binged watched? Like a movie uh, or a TV? Ooh, I watched something the other day. Um, Drive to Survive. Ah, nice F1 series. Yeah. That's good. The golf one's good too. I actually didn't like the golf that much. It's not as good no, as it's F1. Kind of, you know, the F1 is pretty sick. Um, yeah, the F1 uh, was the last one. Well, because you speak like eight languages, and I mean, you would be more F1 than yeah. golf, right? Yeah, definitely. I'm not a big golf guy. Do you collect anything? Uh, no, I don't think so. You collect sticks? Uh, I don't collect them, but I use a lot of them. <laughs> you, com- you compile a lot of sticks? I think it's nice to uh, try to figure out new ways to get better, but it's also nice, you know, something new sometimes in your hand, you get sick of your own, and yeah. Hey, should we close the loop on... Uh, you did, Gate, yeah. You so. did one of the most heroic acts in the history of the Minnesota Wild last year. Hartman scores... He's up against the glass. He's got a big booger coming out of his nose. You can see it. You get right in there with your glove and get that thing wiped away before the cameras were on him. Have you seen this clip? The booger? Yeah, 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 I remember. I mean, he that, almost killed me after that. Cause when did you? Because you like yeah, face washed him. He almost he was like, mad. What the? Uh, but you knew. Yeah, you yeah. Knew. Just trying just to just help, him a help just, a yeah. brother out, you know? Great moment. <laughs> Why have goal, it been tarnished? But you tarnished? can't have a booger all over your face. <laughs> I mean, that is, that's like a Secret Service agent diving in front of the president or something. I mean, that, that was the moment I'm sure everyone knew what you were all about when you got in there. <laughs> well, thank you, yeah. I, uh, Does Hart, Hartsey appreciate it? Has I it don't made think he appreciate it as much as we, he, should. he should. As much really? as he did. So yeah. it didn't make your friendship stronger. I like this one better, uh, that you guys actually appreciate that. He, well, good for you. I, I, yeah, I appreciate I it. I honestly think he should appreciate that way more. I do, so. too. You maybe don't remember this one, but this is another video we caught. Are you, like, were Kirill's hands stoned that day? So it's a video of you going yeah, boom, boom, boom. He said, uh, I know can feel puck. You know? <laughs> and I said, okay, give me this. Boom, 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 a little bit. Uh, Got it out. Third period, two and goals. Then, no yeah. <laughs> Three, four points that game you had, probably. And then here I am at the podcast with the Zuccarello Road the now. Zuccarello Road, yeah. baby. <laughs> you're, you're, hey, we are rolling right down Zuccarello Road. Do you have anything else for him? Uh, no, just I was going to finish up the, the stick. So you like to just practice with somebody else's stick, totally different, and you yeah. use it exactly how they do. It's not like you yeah. cut it to your specs or anything. So you'll the just, they tape it to everything. change it up, you'll just take that stick right out to practice and play with it. Yeah. And then game day, you'll go back to your stick. Yeah. Usually, unless I really like that stick, then I try it. And then in the game, usually when you get to the game, you're like, "Oh no, I need my own." Who's the best stick you've tried? Like yeah. of the ones that aren't yours, what was your favorite? Oof, I don't know. Leandro so, Idol? No, that's uh, <laughs> that's impressive that he plays with that stick. <laughs> so, so it's crazy. Uh, I think back in the day, I the curve that I have now in the stick, I I got a stick from Tatar, um, and it wasn't back in when. The Eastern sticks were, uh, which was my favorite stick, and then ever since that, you kind of trying to find trying it. to find something that is feeling like this. So um, I think that's got to be the best one because uh, I still use the same curve. It's good. Yeah, yeah, it's great. You go down to his rack, and he has like thirty sticks in there, and there will be like a Tatar, there will be a Dry Sidle, there will be like a Johansson yeah. or. Brassard, Brassard, maybe, yeah. or just, I think that's great. That's yeah. got to make you better, though. Doing like putting yourself in kind of a different spot, different angles, and it's probably a good idea. Actually. I had uh, I scored a goal. Uh, the wasn't my last, or yeah, in Philly, I had Eki stick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
from the bench because yours is broken. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you can score nice. with anything. That was, uh, that was nice. I should probably use that more. Well, hey, dude, we appreciate you coming up. Uh, a lot of fun, my man. Uh, Sorry you had to wait. I know oh, yeah. That, I know yeah, that you. you wanted to be on it, but we've got uh, we got people we had to work for. Yeah, yeah that's fine. You know. We were finishing your sign. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> it. As you it, can though. see, it's you very well go made. Go back to Kirill. Got to spell Avenue it right, right too. Yeah. yeah, spell it right. Yeah, you take care of little Kirill uh, well, Bahamas yeah, or whatever. Uh, he can be on the pod for four weeks. Yeah, he can I co-host it for yeah. us if he wants. Yeah, good luck on the road. I don't know who will talk you in now. Maybe someone yeah. to- <laughs> I'll call him. Yeah. <laughs> FaceTime. <laughs> yeah. FaceTime. You'll be okay. Yeah. All right. All right thanks, you guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Well, some pretty interesting stuff from that interview from Zuccarello. One, I find it hilarious. Well, he went back to to san jose i think that was the spot where he forgot all his goods so hopefully he remembered to pack his bag otherwise uh it's the same suit kind of trip for him throughout arizona yeah, you dug up a san nugget jose. that was some i mean i got a shout out i think it was shout out uh one of russo's articles or something he got a, it from Longquest. it's a great that's a great story and and uh i didn't know where you because he's kind of an intimidating guy right like he he's sort of uh you know, he's joking that he's been trying to get on the podcast forever, but he, he's this Matt's is a tough get, right? Like he, we were surprised well, he came on and you're all of a sudden pulling stories out of your bag. I'm like, well, this could go, this could, he's going to leave. This could go. <laughs> what, what's this one? You know, but, uh, you definitely caught him on, uh, he, he was like, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, what did you say? You first, you go, forgetful. are you a forgetful guy? And he's just, cause he's already guarded and he's just looking at you like, what? What is this? Right. Well, I, so I did. Credit to you. I did want to make it a story that had been out there before, so that he's not going to get upset. Um, but he does seem guarded. I think you, he comes from New York, where I think that you they just teach you to be guarded there. Absolutely. Right? So you're protecting it, and um, he still protects himself. Even some of the answers in the the rapid fire, yeah. I think he was. I'm not going to let you know this about yeah. me kind of thing, but yeah. where do you want to go out? Green he de- light. He deflects it with humor a yeah, little like, bit. Like Minnesota. I mean, he's just, he basically like. <laughs> he deflects it. Yeah. He deflects it. You don't get to know that much but, about me. But I'm the here, most, but not a lot. But reading between the lines, what I, what was great about it was it, he seems like he's legitimately a father figure to Kaprizov. Like he seemed to genuinely care that this is Kaprizov's first injury, what it's going to be like for him to be out of the lineup for a couple weeks at a time, how to manage himself and i thought it was hilarious he's like <laughs> enjoy it <laughs> yeah. yeah get on a plane yeah um i i love that and and he uh he is going to be helping yeah, for real well, i mean you can is. tell there's going to be some FaceTime. there's going to be some uh some conversations to kind of manage him through that experience because he hasn't been hurt before and he is emotional about it. it the guy loves playing hockey i mean i that we were kind of asking him i mean i can't even imagine when he can't be on the ice, what it's what he's got to be like to be around. It's got to be horrible. Even coming into the facility and he's around the guys, but he can't go on the ice. No one is a bigger rink rat than Kirill. Right. So I mean, <laughs> Zuki's just got to be on the phone. You know, like hold on. You know, he gets up from the table. He's playing golf in Arizona. Hold on. You know, I got it's Kirill. But uh, yeah, he'll. It's. I think that's a great guy to have that relationship with and. He does know, he knows how to be a pro. He knows he's got perspective on it and he'll help him get through that and he'll help him know when he's ready to be back. I like that. I also think he's just, you know, he played in the KHL. Um, so he he can kind of speak Russian. He can kind of speak mm-hmm. Swedish. Um, what did he say? If he has a couple of vodkas, he's got eight, you know, 14 languages, but if he's <laughs> sober, it's eight or something. I mean, he's he is an international man of mystery. He's interesting. Yeah, he's an interesting dude. And um, and he didn't go out with uh, Ryan Reynolds, so that was disappointing. But but he also closed the loop on Boogergate for us. You know, he almost got his hand bitten off by Hartman. <laughs> Hartman didn't feel appre- he didn't feel appreciated. No good for, deed goes unpunished for his role in that. I feel like we could have Zuccarello on the podcast uh, five straight weeks, and you'd get you'd get five different versions of him. Yeah, he's you know? he is constantly keeping you guessing. He's he's just putting, just like on the ice. He's just keeping you guessing. He's just and putting as soon a as little you guess bit wrong. Up. He lets you know. Yeah. Yeah, just That's putting, so great. Let's get to. Oh, the, we should talk about. I don't know if people saw it, but this was great. So, in the studio, um, I think this started last year. There was a, a Karel Kaprizov um, sign in the studio. It's not up behind me right now, but um, for the listeners, and I think uh, I think he came in here and was like, you know, 
two years in the league. He gets a, we have a shrine now, you know, yeah. Kirill gets a shrine. What, you know, what's up? And so on cue, when, uh, when he walked in, you hear it at the start. I don't know if it'll be in the episode or not, but our producer, um, sets him up. He's got the Kaprizov sign up, but on the back of it, he's written Matt, Zuc Matt Zuccarello Road or something like yeah. that. Zuccarello so Road. On cue, sits down in the chair right away. Three years in the league, he gets a sign, and we just get to jump up, flip it around, and put it to Matt Zuccarello Road. It was it was great. I mean, he walked into it. It was awesome. So I thought that was pretty funny. If you hear that audio, that's what's happening there. I wonder if I wonder if we instantly gained a little street cred. Um, no pun intended. It was a street sign that was flipped yeah. around, but where he he like he wants to come in and rib you yeah. a little bit. And we already we, we're like we were prepared. We're like okay, so he's gonna see this. Yes, it's gonna set him off, <laughs> and then and then I we're did, gonna counter. I did love that. It was so good. I Three think years he was instantly in the league, like huh? okay, they get it. We're like uh, hold on, hold that thought, <laughs> hold my beer. That was so you know, good. I'm gonna flip the sign over, and he had to just be like touche. I do like the other thing. I like is um. This the way Kirill talks when you, when you showed him the little clip of the um the hands yeah breaking his hands and he he even did the Kirill voice where he's like I can't can't feel my hands there's nothing there's nothing I can't feel puck can't feel puck and he's like <laughs> he's like starts chopping it up but I just love that that seems to be how he talks it's like put put in net shoot in net you know all these little clips you see on social media but it's like three words um it's just great i love that i can't feel my i can't feel buck something's wrong and zuki has to help him through it i love where they sit on the bench too and that he just knows that he's got the best spot and krill gets the bad one so he's in krill just that's probably why i got hurt is the doors hitting him you know every right every <laughs> set legs wearing shit. down <laughs> he's just it's, he's 62 games in and it's like a shoreline right, right? it's just getting it's getting weaker maybe they hide snacks in the corner of the bench down there and that's really what they're doing they come off for a little snack if they were if they, if you were to sit in that spot and hide a snack what oh would god you hide? this week i would get some thousand island dressing <laughs> because i'd be making if i were sitting with those two i'd either have a reuben or a rachel get ready for that big bruins tilt on saturday maybe go to jimmy's dressings website and get some creative saint patrick's day ideas because they're a local company uh, started by a crazy grandpa named jimmy um, now it's being run by his grandkids, but uh, I'd go get that Thousand Island dressing. It's in the refrigerated section at the grocery store. Make yourself a Reuben. Make yourself a Rage, Rachel. Have an awesome St. Patrick's Day. Don't you be messing with my dressing. Nicely done. I think in, it's probably comfortable at that spot on the bench too like he zucarello's probably figured out like good airflow yeah they probably have their own good bottle of water quality. They, they've got their own water bottles down there and everything's kind of set and dialed for them um so if you are actually in search of comfort like that in a spot in your home that you'd love to just sit with your friends all the time and and watch hockey and talk a about favorite things, place yeah a, a favorite place in your home but you're you're really struggling because you just can't get your air right um you could check out aquarius home services so whether your furnace or ac struggling to keep you comfortable um, and hopefully your furnace kept you comfortable through the warmth and we're going to give you a little hope right now and let you all know that you're going to need that AC sooner rather than later fingers crossed um, but Aquarius Home Services is offering a new furnace or AC uh, tune up or if you're starting as low as $55 per month uh, so Make sure that you take care of the air quality in your house these guys have got your back so whether you need water conditioning air conditioning, some furnace help, uh, electrical services, plumbing services. These guys are just a quick away, AquariusHomeServices.com. They believe in earning the right to be recommended, my man. And uh, well, I recommend them. I like it. Hey, uh, kind of as we wind down here, I think we got to go back to the fact that the entire Minnesota Wild fan base, when Kirill Kaprizov gets hurt, they're all like, this is going to be good. It's yeah. going to be okay. So yeah. I don't know what's happening. I but think it's happening. That is a that's a really good sign that the that the podcast is working. I, I we, somehow something's happening. Right. I hope it's I hope it's us. But I it is not normal. I mean, you could say Kirill was carrying the team on his back. I mean, he had forty percent of our scoring. He, he was the team, he, and then Logan Stanley just happened to be what. Broke, yeah. it was and, the straw and, that and broke a, the camel's back, quite literally. And and the person that injures him is named Stanley. You're right. I mean, it's like it's like my worst nightmare. You know, all of the hopes and dreams of of finally getting the Stanley Cup to the state of hockey, and then a man named Stanley smashes our star player, and he's out. And everybody's like, 
Oh, it's all good, man. It's all good. This is going to be good yeah. for the guys. They're all going to get going. They're all going to get. They're going to step and, up. And it's I, I good for you, Minnesota fan base. If we can keep that energy, that that swagger, it's going to make a difference in the playoffs. Stay positive. I, I mean, they were more positive than me. I think the fact that the guy's name was Stanley really got in my head where I'm like, we're trying to break the mold. We're trying to get, <laughs> get wild on 7th Street with the Stanley. And then there's a giant man just, and I looked at those pictures too much of Kirill on the ground with his grimace and stuff. But um, yeah, I, good for the fan base, man. I, I hope you're right. I hope we do kind of wind up. We get St. Louis here. We get Boston and keep rolling. All these guys rising up. Yeah, let's look at the standings quick. So it, it's that time of year. You go back just a month, and the Wild were playing Dallas in Dallas. They lost that game 4-1, and Pete DeBoer, while we were there, touched on in his morning availability that if Dallas wins, they kind of put, they felt they kind of put Minnesota in their rear view mirror. They'll be 10 points up um, with a month and a half to go, thinking that that gap was kind of too much for the Wild to have to crawl back. Objects um, and mirror may be closer than, than they, they appear. appear. It's amazing how things can change. Just um, What are we, one point back right now? One I mean. point back right now. And, and Dallas does have a game in hand, but point being is all of a sudden the playing field is really leveled in the West. And um, from top to bottom, it is tight. You've got the Central Division leader, Dallas. They've got 85 points. The West leader is Vegas with 88 points. And you go down to Edmonton, they've got 80 in the wild card spot. And Colorado's got 78 with three games in hand on a lot of these teams. So everybody's right there within about eight points of each other. So anything can happen. But what it looks like for the Wild, if if I were to guess right now, 15 games to go, that they're going to finish two or three. I don't think they're going to drop down they could they could pass Dallas. That's that's a realistic option too, and have to play one of these wild card teams. But um, if I was making a bet, they finish two three, and the other team that I think finishes there is probably Colorado. So if I'm guessing a first round matchup for the Wild, it's it's Colorado, maybe Dallas. I'd love to play Dallas just because of all that North Star stuff. Like I'd like as a franchise, I I think it would be a notable victory to beat the Dallas Stars in the playoffs would be pretty special for the state of hockey. Uh, Colorado, you're not as scared of them this year. That that seems sort of terrifying to play Colorado in the first well, round. The, the thing with Colorado is, is they've never been able to find solid footing. It seems like they're always chasing something this year. So last year they had Kadri in a second line that was dangerous and that top line, Landis Cog, those guys were, were dominant. Landis Cog hasn't played. Uh, you know, they don't have a second line I th and they've moved. So Rantanen now plays on a second line and he's been able to produce, but they really just haven't been able to like absolutely bury teams and make it look easy like they did last year. So um, with that, I think that they've started to think or maybe not think, but realize that there are some, you know, some issues with their club to where it's not just, hey, we're going to roll through this and make everybody look like they're, you know, playing second fiddle and we're going to win a Stanley Cup playing 20 total games. And I don't think that, you know, that's not the same Colorado club this year. So, I mean, it, they're still good, but I don't think that you're that scared. I mean, just look at their – they're 6-3-1 and one in their last 10. That's good hockey. Wild 7-0-3. So, I mean, right there. So um, I, but, can't, I can't wait, by the way. Yeah. I, playoffs are just so – we're now in the part of the season, right? So there's the dog days, like you said, and now we're in the fast forward. Right. Like, it's like, uh, all right, let's just get to – like, let's get to the – good part like we're so close yeah. you, you don't want anyone to get hurt you you almost want to fast forward like you know get Kirill back it is kind of nice I think that um he's out and there's these big kind of gaps in the schedule you mm -hmm. know like I, I think these guys are good timing. we only play like two games this week basically um so I think you know getting that back but I I can't wait for playoffs this is going to be awesome it's a fun time of year too because it it, it it almost switches to where you're celebrating the wins to where now all of a sudden the losses become a bigger deal, right? Like everybody isn't scoreboard watching to see who wins. It's to see who loses. Yep. And um, the, the losses seem to be more powerful for a team like Calgary who was chasing it and they go to Anaheim and lose a game and you're like, you can't lose that game. And you know, this, the balance of their season rests on one game in Anaheim. And that's kind of fun. Um, the wild luckily have played themselves into a situation where that, they're not 
in that scenario. Um, but nonetheless, the, the wins and losses, uh, the losses become more damaging than the wins become helpful. So it's kind of a, it's just a fun time to be watching for sure. But, um, one more thing I want to touch on before we go is a wasted, not a, not a wasted effort. The wild got a point out of it, but a chance for the fourth line to kind of be the stars of the show last game. Yep. And it was like with, Color, or I'm sorry, Arizona taking the the OT win. It kind of took the wind out of the sail. And I know the fourth line still had a good game. Reeves had a Gordie Howe. Man, I was rooting for Mason Shaw to get a Gordie Howe. How great would that be? Two Double. in the same game. That'd be unbelievable. But the the fourth line got going, and that stinks for those guys because you just you sit there, you play a role, you do what you're supposed to. And then every once in a while you chip in offensively and it feels so good if all of a sudden you can be, you can get the game winner and be the difference uh, to keep a streak alive. Um, but unfortunately they wasted that one. But um, that fourth line uh, playing good hockey right now, Dewar, Shaw, um, you know, Reeves getting on the scoreboard. Um, I don't think he really wanted to fight that that guy. They, it, that was weird too. Do you see that they were like chatting pregame? Yep. Like looked like they were buddies. I couldn't tell if it was malicious or not. If it was like an arrangement for a, a potential. You fight think he somewhere. was setting up a, a, like setting the date, saying we're going to do this. Well, sometimes that happens. I think that the the unproven guy will skate up and say, "Hey, I need one tonight. We give me one, st- trying to start off my career or get it going." And then I don't know if that's what the conversation was, or if they know each other or not, or how it went. But it looked pretty cordial. It didn't look like. I'm gonna beat your brains in, kind of talk. Yeah, maybe he asked him to asked him to fight. He needed to or something. You yeah, know? I, I think Shawzi's a guy that they like. You know, uh, I think he's a great teammate too. You hear his name come up a lot when we're talking to the other guys. What they call him, the Shaman. Yeah, that was um, uh, Middleton. It's just the Alberta Shaman. The Alberta Shaman. <laughs> but I, he seems to be. You know, if the guys are going out, you know, I'm sure in Arizona, you see him popping up on the, he's on the fishing boat. He's, you know, he's probably in the great foursome today. Um, he's certainly a guy the guys like playing with. So if I'm Ryan Reeves too, he, he probably doesn't want 40 fights a year, but I think his last two goals have come, his only yeah. two goals have come in games when where he he's fights. got the mitts. Yeah. So it's like the hockey gods are taking care of this guy. It's like right when he flexes his arm, then that must get his his arm loose. <laughs> like he's beat someone up. The hands loosen he, up. He does the flex and then he's going to score. Yeah. I think I, I actually, I bet he would say that if he's, if he's throwing, he's very engaged in the game and he probably, his offense probably does go up. I wonder if we could check that stat. Yeah. In games that he fights, what's his offense look like? Okay. So he fought against the Islanders. He scored that game. He had an assist the following game. He fought against Detroit and scored, didn't he? Well, he's only scored two goals on the year. So maybe an assist. Yeah. Maybe that was the assist, but his offense is through the roof when he drops the mitt. So, Hey, Hey, Seven Street Savages. Note to self. Yeah, if beat wild, someone up. Yeah, if the Wild need a third period goal and and Reeves is out there, just beat somebody up. Beat sit five minutes, up, come out, fill the score. net, <laughs> fill the net. We should talk to his agent. Hey man, d- just drop the gloves yeah. and score every. You're trying time. to negotiate a new deal, just a couple fights, and it's not the fights that are going to give him the deal. It's it's all the goal scoring he's going to be doing. You know, Billy likes the fights too. Yeah, he he, he likes that. Seeing a Gordy Howe hat trick is just that's like made for Bill Guerin. Right. You know, I wonder how many he had. I bet he had a few, but that's great. All right. Well, good stuff today, my man. Good job, fan base. Stay positive. We're here. Till it's here. Awesome. See you. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. It's funny you should say something. It is funny. It is funny. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, John. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that couldn't have been. That couldn't have worked out better. The shrine has melted. These dudes were sweating. They were like, are we going to really turn it around? That was so funny. That was good. <laughs> Three years in the league. <laughs>